terrible. I want you to know that. <laughs> I'm suffering. But now you're in the space with me, Morgan. I'm in the space with you. <laughs> I just don't want to be here. <laughs> Welcome to Notesworthy, a discussion of the strange things found on the internet. I'm Morgan. And I'm Jack. I'm going to show you some posts from the dumpster fire that is Tumblr. And I have a collection of things from Twitter. Morgan, would you like to start us off today? No, because you sound like a really bored radio announcer. That's perfect. That's exactly what I'm going for. Why is that what you're going for? This is the first thing anyone's going to hear from our podcast. Yes, it's very soothing. If you think the point of this podcast is to be soothing, I think we have very different mission statements in mind, and we might need to go back to the drawing board. No, because you're the not soothing one, and it balances out. We're just going to oscillate wildly and terrify our listeners? Yes. Would you like to hear the tweet that I found? (laughs) No, because I already have a Tumblr post for you. Good. Share it. How the hell do I pronounce this username? Spell it for us. Okay. Oh, wait, I figured it out. It's uh, from Tumblr user Exigence Lost says, Okay, but hear me out. Demonic possession would be a really good diagnostic tool, especially for illnesses like fibromyalgia that are hard to test for and have quote unquote subjective symptoms, like you can't externally measure pain and fatigue and someone who's had it all their life won't always know it's not normal. You just draw a nice pentagon, set up all the protective candles, and summon a demon into the patient's body and ask them the sacred questions three, which are, Okay, demon Todd, how bad is it in there? Where are the main places that hurt more than the last 30 humans you possessed? And got any wisdom to share? And then you give Todd a beer and politely excise him from this material plane and start drafting your new treatment plan. I like that. I'm, I'm, I like mainly that the demon is named Todd. Because it reminds I, me was, of Skyrim. <laughs> I have not played Skyrim. I've seen other people play Skyrim. Oh, are you talking about, like, Todd, the guy who made Skyrim? Todd Howard, the Sky, Sky, Skyrim man? Yes. <laughs> the extent of my knowledge on Todd Howard is just the McElroys yelling at him. So I feel like this would be useful for you, given the fact that none of your joints work properly and you won't listen to anyone else. This is true, and I don't know how bad they're supposed to hurt. Because they've kind the of been like this. The answer is not at all. <laughs> well, my knees have hurt for forever. Like, I've had problems That's with bad. stairs since, like, middle school. That's not normal. But, like, here's my beef with this. You can't summon the same demon every time. What do you mean? Say you have, like, a doctor that specializes in patients that have, like, joint issues, right? And you summon mm. the same demon every time. At some point, the demon also won't have a good baseline for what isn't supposed to be hurting. Yes, but if you aren't, like, this doesn't say that the demon is summoned by the same doctor every time. Maybe the demons are on rotation. I would accept that. And, yeah, so, like, specifically the question, where are the main places that hurt more than the last 30 humans you possessed? Like, not everyone's joint pain is going to be in the same places either. I accept that. Would you like to hear the replies to this post? Oh, I'd love to. Especially if they're Skyrim related. They are not. Weezowl, as in like weasel, but like an owl, says, tell me more of your sorcery hospital. And then the OP replies... It's actually a diagnostic clinic only, because last time they tried an innovative treatment, it blew a hole in the ceiling, and all the streetlights on Market Street glowed green for two weeks, and when that kind of thing happens, people with clipboards and crucifixes start to show up and poke around in your cupboards and ask what all the pentagrams are for. Hmm. You gotta watch out for those sneaky folks with crucifixes and clipboards. I mean, listen, I think your first flaw was leaving the pentagrams laying around. But I guess what, you... you expect me to scrape up the pentagrams every time I'm done just to draw a new one? Well, I would think that the best way to do it would be to, like, 
have like floor that has like removable tiling. Hmm. And so like you can like take the old tile and destroy it and then like put a fresh tile down. Okay, but pentagrams pardon me if I'm incorrect because I am not pagan, but I know several people who are. Pentagrams are for protection. Yes. Oh. So isn't the point of the pentagram to contain the demon? That's fair. But I don't know. We're just talking out of our asses right now. Do you have a fun tweet for us? I do have a fun tweet for you. I've got something a little bit horny. Is that acceptable? How horny is it? Not very horny. I don't know what your scale for that is. Okay, well, the the tweet is, Is it good if someone describes your cock as graceful and honorable asking for myself? by at ilu death metal i don't know if that's horny so much as just penis (laughs) (laughs) is it a good thing morgan is it a good thing if someone looks down at your genitals and describes them as graceful i don't know if i want anyone describing any genitals ever because i live in a different world than you what you don't want to hear about dicks jack (laughs) <laughs> Name me one time I have ever wanted to hear about dick. <laughs> what was the description for the penis again? Graceful and honorable. I mean, I suppose. Like. That, the, the, the adjective graceful is what's throwing me for a loop, <laughs> though, because it implies that it's moving independently, and I don't like that shit at all. <laughs> so, like. How much would you like to hear about penises right now? Oh, Lord. Very little, but go ahead. <laughs> Sometimes. This is terrible. I want you to know that. <laughs> I'm suffering. But now you're in the space with me, Morgan. I'm in the space with you. I just don't want to be here. <laughs> Sometimes, like, a, the dick will get hard, right? <laughs> and on, of its own volition, it'll kind of, like, move up and down. Ah! And that could be graceful, I guess. Okay, I'm, 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 the, the reason for yelling is less that now I know a thing, <laughs> and more that I was going to try and bully my mother into listening to this, and now I can never do that. I think this is a good opening to our podcast, especially as earlier you described me as an unenthusiastic radio announcer, and now I'm talking about graceful penises. You can be an unenthusiastic radio announcer about penises, Jack. Good. That's exactly (laughs) what I'm doing. Okay, I've got a Tumblr post for you. All right. If you ever think an undercover cop is following you, yell, crime is good. The cop is required to yell, no, crime is bad at all times. That is the law. And this, oh, I forgot to tell you who it's from. It's from Dutchster, D-U-T-C-H-S-T-E-R. I feel like there are better ways to catch an undercover cop please do enlighten me because i think this sounds like a great plan because it's the law they have to yell that crime is bad and then you'll know they're a cop hmm i hmm i just the sad thing is is that my first thought about the best way to catch an undercover cop would would be to to deal them fake drugs Honey, that's how you go to jail. No, because they're not real drugs. It's like selling do oregano to teenagers the, the, and telling them it's weed. But you can't you get arrested for it. The police care. It depends on what color your skin is. I just want to say that I have a friend who shall remain nameless because I have no idea if they want me to talk about this or not. But we've discussed on multiple occasions that their type is looks like they would be a drug dealer and you fall into that category and you've just confirmed that. Okay, hear me out. (laughs) Say you think that someone you know might be an undercover cop, like investigating. Wait, someone I know? Because I feel like the premise was that someone was just following you down the road. That's why you yell this out. Yeah, if they're following you, you, you can just yell and that's fine. But this is a specific subset where, like, say you think someone you know might be an undercover cop. What you do is you 
get something that looks like drug but is not, like uh, oregano or ground up baby aspirin or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you go and you like try to sell it to them. And then when they go to arrest you, you go, ha, I found you out. It's fake drug and your cover's been blown. I can't see that ending well, though. But you can't get in trouble for it. They were just stupid and blew their own cover. Can't get in trouble for it is not always a good enough reason for the cops, though. It wouldn't fly in court. Because here's the thing. Here's There the are thing. many things that can happen between street corner and court. Okay, true. I feel like I'm getting too real here. Yes, because... You weren't dealing drugs, so you can't get in trouble for dealing drugs, and you can't get in trouble for discovering an undercover cop. What happens between dealing the fake drugs and court is a different story. Okay, true, but let me just say, why? I don't know. (laughs) Like, like why do you dig yourself in further with this cop in order to get yourself almost arrested, only to psych them out? For the power move? I mean, fair, that does emanate a certain level of big dick energy, but at what cost? You've lost your oregano at that point, or your baby aspirin. Hmm, good thing you can buy oregano in bulk. (laughs) (laughs) Jack, do I need to ask about your criminal past now? I have no criminal you, past that you'd be able to find. Do you sell fake drugs to teenagers? <laughs> no. <laughs> teenagers are smarter than cops, don't you know that? <laughs> <laughs> You're valid. <laughs> actually, no. Fuck that, actually. Teenagers are stupid as fuck. I love them. They're so dumb. But they're oh smarter than God. cops. <laughs> debatable but like i i have a sister who is 16 and the kind of shit that she pulls i just it boggles my mind teenagers are full of the stupid they are but that 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 doesn't mean they're not smarter than cops (laughs) you're really dig. you're just really (laughs) stuck on that one aren't you (laughs) Hey everyone, pardon the interruption, but I wanted to real quickly let you know that links to the posts we talk about in the episode can be found on our Tumblr and our Twitter, both of which are at NotesworthyCast. There you can also get updates about upcoming episodes, and if you'd like, you can send us posts you find amusing and maybe we'll talk about them. You can also shoot us an email at NotesworthyCast at gmail.com. If you're enjoying the podcast, it would be really super cool of you to rate and review it on whatever service you're listening on and tell people you think might like it. It would really help us out. Thanks so much for listening. I'll let you get back to the episode now. Bye. Okay. I've got one and it's about a cat. All right, go ahead. Show me I've your got dumpster a post fire. It's about a cat. How the fuck do I pronounce all caps RIP out loud? Because it has a sound in my head, and I don't know how it sounds when I say it in words. To me, whenever someone has RIP typed in all caps, it's just like the Minecraft death noise. They're like, (laughs) 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 I try not to die in Minecraft. I play on peaceful mode. I do too, because I'm not a coward. Blowing it up. Wait, did you say you play on peaceful mode because you're not a coward? Yeah. I play on peaceful mode because I am a coward. Okay. Rip, rip, rip. I can never interact with my neighbor again. Holy fuck. I was outside with my cat just now, and he went behind a shrub for a bit. And me, not realizing my neighbor was on the other side of that same shrub, poked my head round and said way louder than necessary, My scrumptious darling boy, whatever are you doing over there? And this 40-something man I very rarely speak to handled it with remarkable grace and very tentatively responded, watering my roses? You? (laughs) And this post comes to us from Dream Logic on Tumblr. (laughs) Dream Logic, rest in peace. Yeah, R.A.P. You you went out beautifully. You did. I'll say that. 
I like, I think what's really hitting me is the neighbor that took it really well. <laughs> he did. He took it so well. He responded in kind, just like, how, how are you? <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and the thing is, is that I feel like I can't think of a specific interaction in which this has happened to me, but I've had the same things like happen to me at work because of how I work graveyard shifts. <laughs> and <laughs> we'll be like in the back. Are you okay? I'm not. <laughs> this has really struck a chord with me. But we'll be like, <laughs> it, we'll be in the back, right? And we won't see the lobby. And I'll be saying something to my coworker. Oh, and Lord. I'll be saying it way too loud. <laughs> And I'll, like, cross the threshold into where I can see the lobby, and I'll still be talking, and I'll just be, like, saying something to them. Or, like, I'll be, like, shouting to, like, ask them something. And then, like, mm -hmm. a, a customer will, like, spot me and be like, uh, I, I don't know where that is. <laughs> and I'll be like, <laughs> hi! <laughs> I can picture that perfectly. Probably because I've been there for that happening. Oh my god. I goodness. do shit like this all the time. Fortunately, not with my cats, mostly, because they live in my home inside my apartment where my shame is hidden from the world. I've done this with humans. Like, I'll be calling out to one of my dear friends, like you, for example, in your place of business in the graveyard shift. I'll be like, hello, darling, how art thou? And one of your coworkers will look up and be like, huh? And yeah. I'm like, no, not you. Yeah. <laughs> not you. <laughs> They always think that we're dating. Do they really? Yes. I've been asked at least twice if you are dating me. I am not. It's okay. Sorry, Jack, you're not my type. <laughs> I thought your type was girls, so thank you. Exactly! That's my type and you're not it! <laughs> I'm too transgender for you. <laughs> what? I've, I've transgenderized. Jack, that makes me sound like a trans-exclusionist asshole. I tra yeah, but no, I transgendered away from girl. <laughs> if I if I transgendered to girl, that would be fine. What were we talking about? <laughs> Transgenderizing. <laughs> no, before that, bitch, when I read you a Tumblr post. <laughs> we're talking about how sometimes that'll happen to me at work. Like that the per like they called their cat a scrumptious darling, <laughs> and that dude just took it so well. And I I don't fault the person because. I know I've done the same thing with this. This is how we all talk to cats. Yeah, like people will be in my home and I'll be wanting to get Vista's attention. I'll uh -huh. be like, oh, baby, like, and I'll be talking to Vista and he'll be like, what? <laughs> and I'm like, not you. You're not important to me right now. And I'll like pick Vista up and like smooch her. And he'll be like, oh, I understand. <laughs> you don't want me right now. You just want your cat. Yeah, I just want That's my cat. That's just how it be. You can give- I can tell you when I want your attention. If my cat comes up to me for attention, I have to give it to her now or I've lost my chance. That's true. They do have a certain level of just sort of emotional control over everyone they regularly interact with. Or people who they don't interact with because there are people who have never met Vista who still love her. That's so true. I think she's very lovable she's, with long leggy. She's easy to love. Do you have a tweet for me? I just scrolled through one on my timeline. The tweet is, everyone knows you can shoot at a cowboy's feet to make them dance, but you can also shoot at their hands to make them do card tricks, jazz hands, and origami. It's by at wolf puppy. Two P's in puppy, like P-U-P-Y. Okay. <laughs> I like the fact that it implies cowboy is going to do origami as you shoot at their hands. <laughs> See, what I got caught up in is the logistics of where, in relation to the rest of their body, their hands are located that you can cause them to perform these things. Because jazz hands, I understand. You're mm -hmm. shooting into the space around them, their hands are above their head, they will do jazz hands, and the bullets will pass between their fingers, and their hands will be saved. You shoot at their feet, they dance out of the way, and the bullets hit the ground. But if they are doing card <laughs> tricks, or origami, their hands ought to be positioned over center mass... <laughs> Which means shooting at their hands to cause them to perform these tricks would end very badly for them very quickly. I will say this. There are some people that can do card tricks with one hand. Now that's just sorcery right there. 
<laughs> yeah, but then you're shooting at like a sorcerer or a cowboy and you've got bigger problems. It's true. Wait, I have a relevant post and I think it's oh. also from the Twitter. I have to find it while you go on a tangent about this one. But like, I think more scary is the fact so origami takes some time right right and that's the one that really catches me up and it takes the two hands you can't do one-handed origami not even if you're a sorcerer cowboy so like it implies that they're somehow managing to dodge your bullets with their whole body while doing origami and neatly creasing and like We all know that cowboys, at least in our cultural mindset, carry this sort of aura of dust. Yeah. Uh, You don't want to be folding dusty paper. That's just going to be some icky origami. Well, if the dust is dry, it's fine. But the only kind of paper I can imagine... It'll be gritty. Okay, but the only kind of paper I can imagine a cowboy carrying is like rolling paper for cigarettes. (laughs) And that stuff is sticky. Like, it's sticky and it's really thin. You can't... You can't... never crossed my mind. You can't fold origami with that. You just can't do it. What kind... I mean, maybe they have toilet paper? Depends on what time period we're in. That's a good point. But I do have a relevant post for you. Uh, You have a relevant post, and I have a piece of rolling paper that I'm attempting to fold into an origami shape. Wait, why do you have rolling paper? It's not important. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Anyways, I've now- they're rectangular in shape, so I've kind of had to, like, edit it slightly so it's more square. I really appreciate your use of the word edit in terms of modifying a piece of paper. Yeah. Yeah. I edited it permanently with some pairs of scissors. <laughs> Do you mean cut? Perhaps? I meant edit. I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. Alrighty. Anyways, I'm and attempting to the fold origami it going? into a swan. It's going all right. It's very Do you finicky. know how to make an origami swan? Crane, sorry. But by heart, yes. Really? Yes. I'm impressed. Mm-hmm. I would fold them when I got anxious in class. Oh, that's cute. I used to make tiny sculptures out of Play-Doh that I would then let dry in my desk. I made an ice skate and something else. I think that was in the fifth grade. So the thing is, is that this is very small and very finicky because the paper is very thin. And I can just imagine a cowboy that's currently being shot at having some difficulty because they tend to have very large calloused hands. So that's step one on my assumption. Step yes, two. Yes, that's true. Only a proper cowboy would dance when shot at. And proper cowboys would have very hardworking hands. That's true. Because you've got to rope those cows. And calluses make it uh, like difficult to bend your hands in certain and ways. And to do origami, yes. Yes. I'm almost done with the swan. You mean crane? Yes. No, it's complete. It's just very fragile. Um, And it definitely wouldn't survive the Wild Wild West because um, the paper gets, like, more fragile if there's your hands are damp because it's so thin it gets wet fast. And so, um, yeah, unless they've got, like, cigar papers, this isn't happening. I mean, they could also just have normal paper for writing letters. Hmm. But they need You're to keep making a that. lot of presumptions about the literacy of cowboys. Some of them were fairly literate, but they'd want to save that paper to send to their beloved gay cowboy like brethren. I mean, you're not wrong, but who needs to send a letter when he's on the trail with you, you know? That's true. All right. Well, I would still say that writing paper would be a commodity that you wouldn't want to waste on origami. I still don't know what time period we're in. So I'm going to read you a Tumblr post that's actually a tweet that I thought was relevant to shooting at cowboys' hands while they do magic tricks. Oh, perfect. I'm glad we're back on track. Yes. Me. Hi. I'd like to buy a magic bullet. Bed Bath & Beyond employee. Ooh, making some smoothies, huh? Me. No. Clenching fist. I want to kill a wizard. Employee. Eyes going black. Follow me. (laughs) 
that's the beyond in Bed Bath and Beyond, baby. That's true. And this is from at Captain Calvis, K A L V I S, on Twitter. It was only tweeted in February of this year. See, I was hoping to get hired at Bed Bath and Beyond so that I could mm-hmm. learn what the beyond was. I do wish I knew what the beyond was because the idea of purchasing a magic bullet, not for blending, but for killing wizards is deeply appealing to me because it implies that Bed Bath & Beyond is some sort of portal of a Diagon Alley type where you can cross from our normal mundane I need to buy sheets and containers now, please, to a world of magic and mystery. I mean, they sell as seen on TV products, so, like, of course they're a place of mystery. (laughs) Please explain to me what you meant to imply by that. Have you not ever seen, like, an as-seen-on-TV product and been like, there's no way that works in any way whatsoever? But then, like... Yes. And you're like, and there's no way they'd ever sell that in a store. But then, like, it ends up in, like, a Bed Bath & Beyond, and you, like, And you see see it it on the shelf, and you go, why would literally anyone buy this but then you kind of look a little more and you realize that like oh there's stock missing and like people have obviously bought this Mm -hmm. and so that obviously means that ad as seen on tv products that end up at bed bath and beyond are designed for wizards Ah, or wizard realm people and they're the ones buying it they are crossing over and not knowing the function of our human world and are seeing these products as potentially useful, perhaps? I'm saying that the Fae run Bed Bath & Beyond and are creating the As Seen on TV products. And because the Postal Service is so abysmal, they've started stocking them in stores so that they're more accessible. Okay, but then what do they do with the rest of their container store? Uh, that's just, like, to pay rent. Is, am I thinking of a different store when I say container store? Yes. Is there a store called the Container Store? There is. Oh. <laughs> All they sell is containers. You can tell how often I go to the Bed Bath & Beyond that I can't even remember that what you buy there is probably towels. Yes, Bed Bath & Beyond is like kitchen appliances and towels and like weird bathroom stuff. And also as seen on TV products. And also a magic bullet. Depending which which kind you'd want. I'm not going to lie. The first time I read this tweet, my initial reaction was that it was a joke in triplicate because I thought Magic Bullet was not... You can tell how much I care about um, these fad smoothie makers is that when I read that, I was like, ah, yes, a vibrator. (laughs) (laughs) Not, ah, yes, a smoothie machine. (laughs) Okay, but... (laughs) Um, I can know for a fact confirm that if you can buy wizard killing bullets at Bed Bath and Beyond, based on my knowledge of the Dresden Files and Harry Dresden, the Fays must run Bed Bath and Beyond because they're constantly trying to kill the wizard. Who is Harry Dresden? It's a man from a book series that no one has heard of except for me. I've heard the name. Who writes this series? The Dresden Files? I would have to look it up. You have Google? Ah, okay. I also have a swan stuck to my finger. (laughs) You mean a crane? I'm going to keep calling it a swan. By Jim Butcher. Or Butcher. Butcher? Jim Butcher. (laughs) I butchered his name. Or butchered it, I guess. (laughs) Oh, Jack. Oh, Jackery. But there's a wizard in it, and the the fays are constantly trying to kill him. So it all makes sense. The fays run Bed Bath & Beyond. I think that's going to do it for us. Yeah. Welcome to Notes. I think we're done. We've talked about a lot of things that we've regretted and a lot of things that we haven't regretted. Uh, Have a wonderful day. Bye. Bye.